Do you think the inclusion of digitally delivered material should be increased or decreased? I think the, the demand of the student is requiring us to increase the digital delivery of, uh, of instruction. Uh, I believe that we are currently doing that through uh, models like the flipped classroom. We have several programs that are utilizing that. Uh, for those of y'all that do not know about uh, the flipped classroom, so a lot of our media is delivered, uh, maybe the lecture is delivered through an interactive video, uh, through our learning management system, and then when a stu student comes to class, their next meeting, they spend that time implementing uh, the things that they they talked about in the lecture so a lot of those things that we're currently using and I think just the demand of our students is going to require us to increase uh, the material that we deliver digitally. Do you think it is more beneficial to conduct a curriculum design meeting at the community college or at the industry? I think it's better to have it at the community college because what you have to do though is have your industry officials with you you need to have industry input. If Without it, you don't have anything. But when you get the industry members away from the job site, then they can be focused, in my belief. So I think it, it gives them a neutral position. It gives them a place where they can come be away from the job and focus on what would really benefit them as an industry. And so I believe at the community college would be better especially when you're getting gathering the industry input. Do you feel the way that the Mississippi Community College Board gathers material is sufficient? If no, can you think of another way that we should support the curriculum design? Well, what we're doing right now is sufficient, sufficient with the technology that we have at our disposal. Again, we mentioned uh, at the beginning being able to enhance what we're doing with digital uh, platforms to be able to automate it to be able to use uh, our Polycom system, uh, which is our video conferencing system, to enhance what we're doing. I think that would give the, the curriculum team more opportunities to interact and make the process more convenient for them where they're able to do it remotely as opposed to having to drive in uh, to central Mississippi where we're located, where some of the companies are located in the northern part of the state, some in the southern part of the state, which could be uh, in excess of a two to two and a half hour drive. It just will make them more willing to participate in the process to help us strengthen the, the team, the diverse team that we would bring to bear on this process of curriculum. Okay. okay. How often do you meet with your craft committee and how beneficial are those sessions? Okay. Okay. The general rule of thumb, we ask that our programs our program coordinators and, and other uh, faculty members to meet with their advisory committee twice a year. Okay? Um, LaToya, once again, that's a 25-year-old thought process. Um, today's technologies, uh, the communication abilities that we have now, no longer requires that face-to-face -face meeting twice a year, once in the fall, once in the spring. We still encourage it, but uh, what, we, what we encourage even more is just a continuous communication with those advisory committee members. Okay. And we can do that electronically. We can, uh, a lot of my craft committee program, uh, my program directors, have their craft committee contact info on their cell phone. Right. And that's the kind of communication ability you want between your instructors and your craft committee. Exactly. They can Absolutely. call them just hey, anytime they need them. I just heard about this. What do you think? Okay. And, you know, and so we, we, we encourage uh, communications with that craft committee. T today we can do that in a lot of different methodologies. Okay, awesome. Do you Thank have you. any additional comments or concerns that you have that you would like for us to address or how do you see us strengthening our curriculum design? I think the only thing that I could possibly see is that I know we focus a lot probably because of compliance reporting and placement on providing opportunities to students locally, but I think we need to, gonna, we're going to have to look um, 
internationally because a lot of jobs, for example, if there's a student that's going to be working in web design, he or she could be sitting here but working for somebody in another country. You know, so that's going to have to be something that's going to be acceptable. So we're going to need to entwine, I believe, a little bit more of that, that international perspective in there as well. The certifications have been a really big plus. Uh, the credentials, the stacking credentials, we're seeing all that come into play, but uh, just the, the holistic part of it. One other thing, and I know we're kind of trying to embed some of this uh, in our curriculum designs now, are the soft skills. So not a course for soft skills, but just once again, I say intertwining, embedding, whatever you want to call it, into existing curriculum. And then also attaching internships or apprenticeships to every program that we're offering. Awesome. So I think that's the wave of the future and we just need to be ready to take that ride. Right now we see debt is currently rising when it comes to student debt. And with community college, it's a lot better um, money to quality ratio. When you start looking at the student debt and you start looking at people in their bachelor's and master's unprepared for certain jobs because they haven't had that hands-on experience, everything is great in theory, but can we prove it? Can we actually get in and configure the routers and the switches? Can we design virtual reality? Can we configure augmented reality platforms? So in the next five to ten years, I see more and more digital devices uh, giving a helping hand in all types of curriculum, not just technology-based curriculums.